Boys! Can you hear me? Can you see me? I'm a couple of minutes late. Don't think anything of it. <laughs> I had to make up for the fact that I was a couple of minutes early yesterday, you see. That's just how these things go. Um, we're here in court. I have to do the witness testimonies a, a, little get, a, a little bit more. I also need to get a haircut. It's getting way too thick on the top, and I don't love that. It's like wearing a helmet. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do tomorrow. Today, what I did is I met with my eye doctor, and I got my very first contacts. Uh, and I am very bad at putting them in. <laughs> so... <clears throat> I'm gonna have to be practicing that skill. I'm not wearing contact lenses right now, so don't worry. I still absolutely cannot read, <laughs> like like I've always not been able to do. Um, yeah. So day one of wearing contacts, I was told that I'm not supposed to wear them for longer than four hours. So they're in solution. I can take them out. Also not very good at all, but like I can take them out better than I can put them in. And I'm hoping that I can get better at it. You have to keep in mind, I'm a fully grown adult man who has never touched his own eyeball before today. So, <laughs> so I think there's going to be a bit of a learning curve with having to overcome my eyes instinctual reflex to just not let anything touch it. <laughs> You know, that, that's that's a little bit difficult to overcome, but I, I'm told that it gets better over time. And, and people who use contacts regularly, apparently they can just fucking stab themselves in the eyes without anything, without even blinking. I, I don't get it. But anyways, um, let me get my hellos in order. Changeling DJ, please tell me you have alcohol. Why are we trying to get shit-faced tonight? It's a, it's a, what day of the week is it? Isn't it, <laughs> isn't it the middle of the week? Um, shot stream? Guys, what are you going off about? Um, John F., good to see a fiction of grander. Tim W., changeling DJ. I, oh, I already said hi. I do have alcohol, so don't, don't worry. It exists. It's here. But also, I don't know if we're in that kind of energy. <laughs> Volgan11, hello. Um, contacts like Zesties. Yeah. All right, so yeah, this guy's doing a testimony for us. The moment of the shooting. We have to hear about this. I have to hear what he's got to say about this stuff. And uh, we got to keep him in the hot seat while we can. I say we just jump right into it. Well, these ruffians were jostling with the broker. I was still near the entrance to the shop. That's when Windebank threw Nash over the counter. I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shed himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole through the door, though. The accused in a black coat shot the man in the bag as he was trying to flee for safety. I saw the blood spatter all over that wretched girl. Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole, so I picked it up and made my escape. None of that sounds credible in the slightest. Oh, good gracious. This is quite extraordinary testimony. Yeah, extraordinarily foul, your honor, your majesty, your lordship. You're not buying any of this shit. This, can, isn't, isn't there a testimony that's so ridiculous that we can just, like, throw it out because it's blatantly ludicrous? Does that exist? You claim, sir, under oath, to have clearly seen the defendant pull the trigger. Right. Alright, well, let's get ready to rip this apart. Order! It wasn't my intention to testify in this way. But neither is it my intention to be found guilty of a murder that I didn't commit. So you see... My hand has been forced. I tell the truth now as an act of self-preservation. The truth? Until now, the prosecution was completely unaware of these details. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Having shot me in the arm, the pawnbroker was then shot in the back by the accused. And as I said, she was simply showered in blood. You say the blood spattered all over the accused's soul.
Cool. What? What? Oh my god. <laughs> Where did that come from? I'm sorry. Run that back. You say the blood spattered over the accused's coat. Are you sure on that point? I don't like... <clears throat> Ooh, I don't like that scratchiness in my throat. I don't like... <clears throat> Ooh. Am I gonna need to pour a glass of water? Fuck. Um... I don't like that they use the word spattered. I want to say splattered. I feel like it needs a, it needs a nice a nice thick L in there, and it needs to be a splat, not a spat. You know, that's just me. Oh yes, quite sure. All over the black overcoats that pickpocket girl was wearing at the time. Oh really? Well, if her coat somehow be shown to harbor vestiges of blood, that would certainly be conclusive evidence here. Yeah. <clears throat> Such an investigation is entirely possible, my lord. What? Only very recently, a German scientist has developed a technique to identify human blood. So here's to true science, and not some amateurish detective's dubious foray into the world of chemistry. There's nothing dubious about Hurley's work! His ideas are all sound! Ideas are no use to us here! In science, as in law, Tito TJ! Theories must be proven before they stand. I'm gonna get some water. Water, bitch. Tito Teach has just donated $9. Clear that throat, George. All right, Daddy, I will go clear it. Nobody look at my pants. I'm not wearing any. Gotta just scoot up brain. All right, I'm back. Gotta put in my little magic headset. Gotta get my little cup. Uh, Dupless Sky! Hello, George, was the eclipse nice? Oh, it was... I was mildly disappointed that it wasn't a clear day, but I did catch a glimpse of it, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I personally think the sky turning to complete darkness in like a matter of seconds was much cooler than even just seeing, like, the little ring of the corona around the blackened moon. Okay. <clears throat> ha 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 ha! Moving on. In Germany, the technique has already been employed in the courtroom as the basis of evidence. Scotland Yard has a small quantity of the chemical reagent used. With your lordship's permission... We could shatter all vestiges of doubt within minutes. Hmm. Is what he's saying... Like, factual information? I am not... Believe it or not, I'm not an expert on blood testing history. Uh, German... Scientist discovered uh, human blood testing? <laughs> it was the year 1900 when Karl Landsteiner at the University of Vienna discovered why some blood transfusions were successful while others could be deadly. It was Landsteiner who discovered the ABO blood group system by mixing the red cells and the serum uh, of each of his staff. Oh, his staff, did he? So, is this what the game is referring to? He discovered the different blood types? The game's a little bit vague in their terminology, which is kind of weird, because both fucking Iris and this guy, Lord Von Zeeks, they never actually use the word blood types. And we never talk about A, Bs, and Os. That could be thematic to the game taking place in this time period, perhaps. Um, actually, that would probably make the most sense. Um, cause today, obviously, we know about people's blood types, um, by the an and, and that's all based on the antigens you have on the surface of your, uh, blood cells. Uh, so, 
In case there's anybody who doesn't know offhand, yeah, your blood can have A antigens on it, and antigens are basically just little uh, uh, sh shits on, on your cells that trigger immune reactions and immune responses. Um, so obviously your body knows your own blood, so whatever you have, you're fine, and you can receive blood the same way. So if you have A-type blood, you can receive A-type blood, and you can receive O-type blood because O-type blood, well, there's also the RH factor, you can be O-positive or O-negative. Um, for simplicity's sake, we could say that the true universal donor would be an O-negative. Um, so you could receive O-type blood, uh, any, anybody can receive O-type blood, um, uh, and if you have, if you have it, you're an ideal blood donor, so you could figure out your blood type. But yeah, if, if you are somebody who has A antigens, you can't receive blood from somebody who has B antigens because your body's gonna be like, what the fuck is this shit? That's not me, attacketh it, because that's what your body does. Your body... Believe it or not, its goal is to kill the shit out of everything that's not you, and, you know, all the all the microorganisms that have mastered living inside of you. But they've, they've like, you know, worked out a deal with your immune system to, to, to chill there. So, it, it's really cool science, actually. And, you know, it, it's a newer field of science. Uh, people who like to study the microbiome and all of the flora that live inside of you. It's cool shit. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, if you're- so, yeah, the opposite end of that spectrum, if you're AB positive, you selfish bastard, you are the universal recipient, you, if you ever get in some kind of medical emergency where you need blood, you can take just about almost anybody's. <laughs> but your blood is almost useless, because your blood can be given to the least amount of people. So, if you're more interested in yourself, it's great to be AB positive. If you're more interested in having the ability to help other people, it's better to be um, O negative. I once got extra credit on a school assignment because I had a professor in university who made a deal with the students. He, they, they, there was a blood drive, and he believes in this cause of like people who are healthy and young giving their blood to a noble cause, blood banks that need it, yada yada. So he made it an extra credit assignment. It was like, hey, if you go and donate blood, you can get extra credit on this upcoming test. Well, I'm a, a homosexual. I'm not allowed to donate blood. And uh, so this, I, I quite simply brought it up to the professor. I was like, ah, oh, sir. I'm not, the government doesn't really let me donate blood or the Red Cross. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's the Red Cross policy specifically or if it's the government's policy, but I can't do it. And then the professor got very awkward. And so he was just like, oh, okay, well you, 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 you we'll just give you the extra credit. And I was like, dope, thanks. You know, it pays to be gay. I get, I get, I get the credit without having to do the work. And that is on gay men not being able to donate blood. <laughs> All right, let me get back on check. Wait, what? You can't hear me. Sam Newton, can the rest of you hear me? I hope so. All right, back to Ace Attorney. <laughs> Doing too much blood talk. This doesn't look good, Runo! But also, you do need your fun fact of the day. So it's Carl Landsteiner. I'm gonna say it again, chat, because th third time's the charm. That's when you commit it to memory. The year was 1900. That's an easy year because there is no... Uh, it's just the 19 and then the zeros. It's a nice even number. Carl Landsteiner. Carl Landsteiner. Carl Landsteiner. Um, Steiner? Steiner. Steiner? University of Vienna, discover the ABO blood groups. There you go, boys. You learn with me, you're gonna get an education. It's the best kind of fun because you learn something. This doesn't look good, Runo! Why not? Well, we know, don't we, that there's blood all over the front of Ginny's coat! If they test it with their chemicals... Oh yeah, you're right. Don't move, Ginny! I'm going to shoot! Yeah, this girl was fucking bathed in blood. 
But also, it's all specifically only on the overcoat. It's not on her clothes underneath. But that's not Mr. Windebank's blood. That stain is from two months ago. That's Mr. Mason's blood from when he was stabbed by Mr. McGilded, who was wearing the coat at the time. Right. Also, like... <laughs> Sorry, I'm going back to the blood thing. This is what kind of bothered me a little bit in this game about the blood thing, is because since they're being so vague, uh, fucking Iris, her, she was, her, her color system is like, oh, everybody's blood turns a different color because it's unique to the person. And I was like, kind of confused by this a little bit because, because yes, there are different blood groups, but like, Within those groups, you have so many people that fit within them. So, like, it's not as if one person has blood type A, and then another person has blood type QYZTW. Like, <laughs> there's simply not that many groups, so it's, it's relatively common that if you take a random sample of people at a crime scene, by blood- if, if you're only distinguishing by blood type alone, and you're being like, well, hey, the suspect had blood type A, well, that could be, like, five or six different suspects that all have blood type A, for all we know. You know, it, it, it's not as unique as, like, DNA evidence by any by any means. So, I was confused if the game was, like, making up their own more specific blood test, or if they were, or if they were referencing the blood type groups. And it was a little confusing to me. But it, it seems like that's what they're referencing. So, I don't know why each blood is being very specifically ruled to each person, unless it's just happenstance for the plot of this game that every single player in my courtroom all has a blood type that is exactly different from another player, which is remarkable. <laughs> my lord, the defense objects to the test proposed by the prosecution. Overruled. Lord Von Zeeks, make it so at once. With pleasure, my lord. And while we await the results, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Once they find that blood on the overcoat, Gina's gonna be... Counsel? Yeah, my lord, dad? Your cross-examination. Right, okay. If this doesn't go well, if I don't manage to uncover some decisive evidence, or a really compelling clue, I just have a bad feeling about the outcome of the trial. Alright, well, let's see how it goes. Alright, press everything, I guess. Mr. Windebank emerged from the storeroom, I believe. Ringo and Nash were scouring on the counter when he suddenly appeared and flew at them! He already had the revolver in his hand. Fortunately, I wasn't too close. I've never been so scared in all my life! Yeah, we're just your regular, mild-mannered burglars. That's all. We don't like the violence. Says the pair who carry a gun. What do you mean when you say you were near the entrance to the shop? Well, I was in the doorway, running my eyes over the shelves for forfeited items. Looking for the music box, I see. The broker went for Nash in the first place. Then Ringo joined in, making it two against one. I assumed that they'd be able to handle the situation. But, alas, I was wrong. I was trying to help me little brav, but the old geezer chucked me over the bloom encounter. So I pulled me a gun on the fella, and that soon made him scapper. The pair of you setting upon the poor defenseless pawnbroker together? You know, it's a real shame on you. Oh, sorry, Gov. Alright, when Windebank threw Nash over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. What? Tell me about getting shot. So you mean to say that's the moment you were shot? Well, yes! Though I didn't immediately realize what had happened, of course. Things crashed to the floor from the counter as three men were brawling! It was at exactly that moment that it happened, so I didn't hear the gunshot. And the bullet went to strike the calendar in the wall behind you. So it would appear. 
When I looked at my arm, I saw it was bleeding pretty bad, so I wrapped my handkerchief around it. Seeing as I couldn't explain what had happened to a doctor, I had no choice but to wait for it to heal. That sounds... not appropriate to do. I didn't imagine it would still be bleeding two days later. Did Mr. Windbank intend to shoot you, do you think? Well, no, I don't imagine he even noticed I was there, to be honest. Perhaps the gun went off accidentally. Anyway, it didn't quite strike home. When I pulled me gun on him, he tried to shove me out of the way! And then he scarpered through the door out back. At which point, what did you do? Pursued the man, but he shot himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole. Okay. You mean you chased after him? I don't recall the reason why, but I ran after him to the back of the shop. And what about this peephole in the door you mentioned? Well, unsurprisingly, the storeroom door is a solid job made of stout wood. But there's a small opening in it about uh, head height. That lets you see what's going on in there from the outside. Actually, I should know that, shouldn't I? I looked through it myself that night. Johnny Petriello, hello. And what about you burgling brothers? Did you see what went on through this people as well? Not likely, Gov! Didn't see nothing of the sort, Gov. I doubt these two buffoons were even aware of the people's existence. So the Skulkin brothers were there, but they didn't see the killing of Mr. Windebank take place. Hmm. Inside the storeroom, I could see the broker and that young girl standing there. The defendant? Yes. Though neither of them noticed that I was looking. The girl raised her gun and pointed it straight at the man! And then, what did you see next? The accused in a black coat shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee for safety. Alright, press that. Right. When the crime was discovered, the defendant was found with a gun in her hand. But that was Mr. Windebank's gun from which only a single bullet had been fired. And as we've already established, Mr. Graydon, I mean Ashley, that bullet was fired at you. Oh, but no, it wasn't the broker's gun that the pickpocket girl had when I saw her. Yes! The bullet from Windebank's gun grazed my arm, and yes! The Skulkin's gun grounded the detective! But this was another gun entirely. It was a third gun. The broker's gun was not the murder weapon, so clearly there had to have been a third firearm involved. In other words, the accused must have had her own gun with her at the okay. time. But no other gun was found at the scene! <laughs> Calm yourself, counsel. Sorry? You must consider the events in order. Huh? At first I saw the broker and the girl glaring at one another, but then all of a sudden, the broker turned to run! And it was at that moment that the little gutter rat shot him in the back! Oh, chilling image. I'll say. I saw the blood spatter all over the wretched girl. Okay, <gasps> describe that to me. All over her, you mean? Well, yes. Through the people, I saw it quite clearly. Of course, the stains are invisible now. What with the coat being such a dark color? But I simply assure you that garment is sullied with the victim's blood. It is sullied with blood, that's for certain. But it's not Mr. Windebank's blood, is it? That's right. It's Mr. Mason Milverton's blood from when McGill had stabbed him two months earlier. Uh, it's so annoying! If they'd only accept Hurley's chemical analysis, we could prove that! Yeah, but they're not gonna. So we can't use it as evidence to support our case. Bother! And then she tossed the gun out of the people, so I picked it up and made my escape. Hold it. Escape. Did I hear you correctly? She threw the gun out of the room, you decided, I'ma pick this up and I'ma dip? That's right. 
After the broker fell to the floor, she started walking over. Over to where, exactly? In the direction of the storeroom door to where I was watching. Of course, I quickly retreated, and then... The girl dropped the gun through the people onto the floor on my side of the door. Now, why on earth would she do such a thing? I couldn't tell you. Perhaps she was hoping to distance herself from the murder weapon. Without thinking, I simply went and picked it up. I suppose I was worried about just leaving it there, you know, in case any more tragedies were to take place. Hmm, are you buying this? So it was you, in fact, who took the third gun from the scene of the crime. Yes, it was yours truly. Well, do you have it? Hmm. I left the clear-up to my lackeys and left. The clear-up? We had made a bit of a mess around the counter, so Mr. Whistle and Flute here told us to tidy up. He thinks our blooming mom sometimes. Well, I was paying you enough. By God! Huh. Uh, tell me this, Ashley. When you left the pawn brokery that night, was it by any chance with the second disc in your jack jacket j in the pocket of your jacket? You little toe rag. <laughs> Did he just call him a toe rag? What the fuck? You're like a bull in a gate, aren't you? Oh, they're fighting. Oh my god. Uh, excuse me. Uh, hey, gentlemen. Do you mind chilling the fuck out? Uh, 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 was that as good for you as it was for me? No. Something wrong, sunshine! Uh, I think that's supposed to be my line, given the circumstance here. You were just violently shaking Mr. Skulkin. Blimey, this D's a bit of an hooligan, ain't he? Wh what is going on? Well, you saw him, he just grabbed me and whistled. Why, in the blazes, he said. Didn't you mention the third gun when you got down at the station? Okay, well, why didn't you mention the third gun? Guys, we didn't know nothing about it! Or that flaming people on the door. Um, I'm sorry about that. I can be prone to losing my rags sometimes. You're not hurt, are you? Go on, blimey! See the way he's looking at me, I'm telling ya! This D gives me the willies! I don't understand your foreign language. I just want to get through the case. This is strange. The inspector doesn't normally get quite so worked up as that. He wouldn't normally assault somebody. No, that wasn't really like Gregsy at all. He's normally all sweetness and light no matter what I say to him. Yeah, well, he's never really been like that for me either. I think you might just be a special case, Iris. Anyway, that was definitely out of character. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna skate by that? My lord! Oh. Requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination. Explain yourself, officer. I have the results of the test that was ordered earlier, my lord. Ah, oh, the blood on the accused's overcoat. Ah, thank you, officer. Very well, the cross-examination is hereby temporarily suspended. I presume you have no objection, counsel. Um, I, well, I, well, you, you see, I, uh, no. No, I do not, my lord. <laughs> All right, let's see the damage. Well, there you have it. The report, please, Inspector. Yes, sir. Traces of human blood were found on the overcoat of the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. From the extent of the stains, it would appear that they were the result of spattering following a gunshot wound. Okay. So now, Hurley's test vaguely alludes to being able to distinguish blood types within people. It sounds like this test in, in the game universe is only able to distinguish that the blood is of human nature rather than, I, I guess, like animal blood. Um, but it cannot distinguish between different blood types? 
Is that what I'm being led to believe now? This is all... I need specific terminology. I need the science research, okay? You, you guys are just like throwing out terms of testing and I don't even know what's being tested. End of report. Oh, goodness me. Okay, calm down, Cinderella. See? What did I tell you? But the blood on that coat is not Mr. Windebanks. Well, what on earth makes you say that, Counselor? The coat originally belongs to Magnus McGilded. Just before his coat was deposited at Windebanks, McGilded had fatally stabbed Mr. Mason Milverton. So the blood on that overcoat is the blood of the brickmaker from the omnibus case. Well, the dead cannot speak. Isn't that right, my Nipponese friend? Excuse me? Two months ago, in this very courtroom, did you not argue fervently for McGilded's innocence, and yet now that the man is dead, you brand him as a murderer? Well, my opinions have grown. Your conduct shatters any shred of respect you may have earned to yourself in this country. Um... But, but that's not fair! I call it a badly disgrace. Treachery is what it is. Hmm. Oh, how to determine whether the blood on that coat is two months old or not? Even a stereoscope couldn't help you answer that problem out! It, it simply can't be done, you fuckwad! But, but, I... We used Mr. Sholmes' specially formulated chemicals! Well, Shams is a detective, not a chemist, and quite frankly, I didn't hear any in specific information on what the chemical is or what's being tested. Is it a protein? Is it a cell? You're just saying, you're just throwing out words here, my young whippersnapper boy. You're just saying colorful chemicals turn colors. That's pseudoscience. What are you, a phrenologist? What do you put such faith in a chemical formula devised by me, for example, when I'm a communications officer? I held out the pierogi by starving a boy. He ran away and cried to mom. She was fat. What? Herlock Sholmes is barely more than a figment of the public's imagination. His name carries no weight in this courtroom. No weight at all. But how can you say that? Listen, on honest on God here, without some type of specific documentation of what these chemicals are and what they're doing, I don't blame the jury for being skeptics here. You're just throwing colors on something and, and saying that, oh, well, you know, it is a chemical. I can't tell you what the chemical is or what reaction is happening, but it's a chemical and it's telling us that this blood belongs. It, it's just, we're, we're, it might as well be magic. <laughs> Victory is sweet indeed. This proves that my testimony is the whole truth from start to finish. And how do you arrive at such a conclusion, sir? As the witness said, the accused's coat was spattered with the blood of the victim. The only way Mr. Graydon could possibly have known that fact is if he saw it happen. Or he knew that there was blood on the coat from the McGilded case and he's just lying. Like, so on my team's defense, I do agree that we can't prove the blood is Magnus McGilded's, but we also can't, er, sorry, um, we can't prove that the, the blood is Mason Milverton's, but we also can't prove that the blood is the pawnbroker's. The only thing, the only proof we have by, by accepted court standards is that the blood is that of some type of human. Alright, for all we know, Gina Lestrade could come back out on the stand and say that it's her blood. That she got scared and she perioded all over the coat. And you know what? Are you going to be able to disprove that? I don't think so. In other words, his testimony is solid and the conclusion is singular. It was the accused who shot the victim in this case. That is the whole truth. I need to figure out a game plan here. My lord! Oh. Been a long battle, this one, but this old warhorse has something to say now, if you please. Oh, Mr. Foreman, please, for the love of God, do not put me through another jury summation cross-examination. As of this moment, sir, the squadron has reached its final decision. You ready, men? All for one now. Sir. Guilty. Okay. Guilty. God damn it. Guilty. Oh, we're going through it again, Guilty. aren't we? 
Damn it. Guilty. Okay. Guilty. Don't you guys think you're being a little bit rash? Well, it would appear the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached a unanimous verdict. That was a great closed mouth sip, your honor. <laughs> your magistry. I'm sorry, your prosecution. The defense has consistently failed to unpick this witness's testimony. Here's to any attempt you may make at unpicking the juror's decisions being equally successful. Ugh. God damn it. God damn it, we've had to do so many of these. How very distressing. To be held in such low esteem. Herlock? Oh, Bailiff? Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Naruhoto? I- what? What? Officer? You've delivered the report, now that will be all, thank you. It occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Naruhodo, that scientific truths are determined not by science, but by none other than the human mind. Wait. Is it Herlock? In disguise? Am I going mad? Am I hallucinating? Yeah, it's him. <laughs> This little stash. Mr. Sholmes? What is the meaning of this? Oh, wow. Did you see his fucking pose? What a... What business do you have here, detective? The last I heard, you were recuperating in the hospital. As well I would be. Had I not been set upon an errand? What errand? Yeah, good day, Iris. I appear to be rather late to rise. My apologies. Now, my lord, if you'll humor me. In what manner, sir? I have something of great importance I wish to give the young lawyer over there. I need no more than five minutes. Would you be so kind to spare us the time? Hmm. What say you to this, Lord Von Seeks? This trial has taken many hours of the court's time. You mean weeks. Having spent so long already... Exactly! Having spent so long already, we don't want to go wasting any more time. As I was saying, having spent so long already, it would seem churlish to deny the defense a mere five minutes. Huh? Ah! Very well then. Counsel, you may have five minutes. Great. That's usually all I fucking need. It's only about my pleasure. What? My dear fellow, I apologize for my tardy arrival. Mr. Sholmes, are you okay? Ha <laughs> ha! Am I okay? I'm all wrong. Sorry? I've only just managed to summon the strength to stand, man. I asked the judge for five minutes. But I fear even that may prove too much for me. Pray. Forgive me, should I pass out? Uh, okay, well then, why don't you get to the point and be as, as, as concise as possible, and let's not waste a bunch of time. Hurley, this place is full of idiots! None of them can see how wonderful your chemical is! Oh, well, well, that concoction of mine was really just a bit of sport to assist me in my investigations. Well, I never took the trouble to refine it for appraisal by the scientific community. An oversight on my part, perhaps. Right. An oversight. But enough of that! Well, I'm here to give you this, my dear fellow. Great, what is it? A lavender feros... Fer feroshiki wrapping? A leaving present! It's from Susato! Ah! She's coming back! Susato-san? If possible. Matters were to be settled without me giving you this. Those were her instructions when she asked me to do her this favor. 
Wait, what? I don't understand. She didn't want me to have it? it it's... Is it her trump card, our last resort? Miss Susanto foresaw today's events, I believe. She knew that the culprit would attempt to escape justice by means both devious and underhand. And that you, Mr. Naruhodo, fighting fairly as you are, won't do to want to do want you you you'll, you'd find yourself in peril, is what she said. That's that moment of crisis. That's when you were to be given this small parcel. Those were the dear lady's instructions. A leaving present from Susato-san. What is it? I guess I gotta unwrap it. Oh. Wait, what? What is this? Oh! It's the machine I made! Huh? Cali? The Calico Cal- I'm sorry, Wagahai? Look! I used this! It's my latest invention! I call it... The Cat flap a mat It can make a cat flap for a little furry friend like Waggy in seconds! Bro... Wait... Are we... Are we now, in the final hour, this random machine and this little cat door, are we suggesting that the peephole in the door at the pawnbrokery was created by this device at a later point in time, perhaps? How am I gonna prove that? That's the only, like, flippity-flappity-flappy door I can think of. What do you think Susie's up to? Miss Susato muttered the following words before she left. I'm a failure. I don't deserve to be a judicial assistant. Oh my god, and you let her leave with those as her final words? You know, you really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But, I'm sorry to say... ...that I've been a complete failure. What? Why would she think that? I don't understand. Last night, when you left Windabanks in pursuit of the thieves. Miss Susato made use of this contraption for a certain purpose. Did Susato make the hole in the door? That is your answer, dear fellow. Not at all cryptic, are you? Susato-san used the cat flap -a mat that night, but... Why? Rapid creation of small flaps and larger doors to allow cats to come and go freely. Because the door was locked and she wanted to see inside the door? Oh. Your five minutes is over! Oh! We're out of time already. Huh. This is rather interesting. I'm grateful to you for affording us that brief recess, Mr. Reaper. I need no thanks, detective. After all, the die is cast. Is it really? The jurors are unanimous in their leanings. No doubt my learned friend will consider a summation examination. But any attempt to alter the verdict now would be utterly futile. I wonder. Mr. Naruhodo. Yeah, to be fair, I don't think I ever got to finish my cross-examination. Could I circle back to that? Because I recall being rudely interrupted by all of this blood testing nonsense. Yeah? The rest is down to you, dear fellow. What is your plan? The rest is down to me. I need to be careful here. If I make a wrong move, the trial will end. It'll end badly. My lord, the defense requests... Oh, look at this! The summation exam... Or further cross-examination... Or, or time to think. Okay, um... Hmm, 
I don't know. Save? I mean, time to think makes me think grasping at a straw for time to pick one of these two choices. Summation examination is where the game is going. However, my brain is thinking like, we were in the middle of a cross-examination and the cross-examination was interrupted. It wasn't formally ended, right? I don't think. Guys, I saved, don't worry. My guts, my, my first instinct was cross-examination. Maybe I should go back to that. That's also the oddball out. Time to think doesn't, I don't think, get us anywhere. Summation examination is what's normal. And also, guys, let's be honest. I do not want to do another, I don't want to deal with the jury anymore. All right, let me see what this one does. We request, we, 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 we I request further cross-examination. The jurors have spoken. Protocol dictates that you may not cross-examine a new witness now. The defense is not asking for the cross-examination of new witnesses. I want to continue with the one with an existing witness. What? It would appear that a rather important detail has escaped your attention, Mr. Reaper. My lord, requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination. Right, yeah, see? I am on my fucking noggin, okay? I'm thinking. I'm, I'm in- I'm watching this. Alright, yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, we- I- I remember this. <laughs> so nobody can say anything then! If Runo asks to resume his cross-examination of Mr. Graydon! Well, the court is obliged to allow it! This is absurd! Oh my god, did you see his fucking- Oh, everybody's so dramatic. The theatrics. Everybody's a fucking thespian in this world. I would remind those present that this is in my courtroom. I concur that the defense is entirely within its rights to request the continuation of the cross-examination. However, I will not permit an unremitting protraction of these proceedings. Therefore, I have decided to afford the defense one final opportunity in concluding the cross-examination. Counsel, you must choose but one statement from the witness's testimony and but one piece of evidence to present in support of your argument against it. A single chance to present evidence. If, following that, the situation remains unchanged, I shall move to adjudication. Is that clear, counselors? You will not press the witness any further. My lord. Okay, no pressing the witness. Got it. One statement, one piece of evidence. Hmm. A single statement, and a single piece of evidence. <laughs> Most generous. Well then, Mr. Naruhodo, it's high time I fell in a dead faint. Oh my god, is he... <laughs> I leave this in your capable... <laughs> Fuds. That's me. Me... Sholmes? I... I feel like he's fine. I feel like he's just, you know, a thespian, being dramatic, you know. Okay. To stand so incessantly before the court in a state of such high fever, either the man has extraordinary strength of mind or an extraordinary lack of feeling. I imagine he's feeling very little now. The detective is sleeping soundly in one of the antechambers. Strike a man when he's down. Why don't you? Well then, counsel, are you fully prepared? Yeah. One statement, one piece of evidence. Okay, I'm not gonna let Sholmes down. I'm thinking I'm duh. Oof. Don't waste this final chance that Susato san has given me. This right here. This decides the outcome of this trial. No pressure. 
Very well, then. Under the terms I have outlined, you may resume the cross-examination. Thanks. Mm. Sniffles. Gotta sneeze. All right, boy. <laughs> Let's touch tips. I oh wow okay yeah you, somebody said that there'd be a music change I think this is it all right no spoilers chat this is like clearly the climax right the, the the culminating moment this is my chance to prove to the internet to prove to all of you fuckers I mean what the effers that I've been paying attention to this game and that I know how to solve the case it's my moment to shine. So like, give me a minute. I'm gonna look over all of my options and I'm going to make the correct decision. Also, yeah, say bless you, fucking Christ. Thank you, <laughs> Vinprox Entertainment. I feel blessed. All right, while the ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still near the entrance. Windebank threw Nash over the counter. I felt a sharp pain in my arm. Pursued the man, but he shut himself shut in the storeroom. I could see him through the people through the door. Everything is screaming to me that the people wouldn't have been there at that time. Right? And this is the evidence we just got. Surely it's the evidence we want to use. Is there anything special to look at on it? Maybe? Okay, vicious teeth, it looks like they could rip through almost anything. They're made of a special alloy that I developed just for the job. The cutter rotates ten times per second, so it can get through any kind of door in no time at all. What about the two parts at the top there? Those are for attaching hinges to the section of the door that gets cut out. Of course. Nothing can match this machine for power. It can make mincemeat out of even the toughest of doors. Okay. I f feel like that's gonna be our connection, right? The specific, maybe? Can I see a picture of the door at all? Not the, wait, actually. Oh my god! Girl, I've been looking at these photos so many times in this courtroom. Do you guys see this shit? Look at this! Look, look at, look at, look, look at, look at, look at, look, look! At 1.30 a.m., there's a door! Like, well, <laughs> there, there's a cat flap -a mat door inside of the door. But at 1 o'clock a.m., there's no cat flap -a mat in the flap -a mat door. <laughs> wow! So this is, okay. This doesn't make my job easier though. Because now I have three pieces of evidence. Despite the fact that I want to use one piece of evidence. So still no spoilers chat. I figured it out, but like not all the way. Because I can only present one piece of, the smoking gun is we have the flap -a mat um, But, to prove that the cat flap -a mat was used to add a door, it's gonna, at some point, ask me for these pictures. These two pictures show the discrepancy. They show that the flap -a mat door wasn't there, and then the flap -a mat door was there. So, that's gonna be important. But, I don't think that the photos are the evidence yet. I think first we have to propose that the flap mat was used to make the door. We probably want to do it on this statement. I could see him through the peephole in the door. But first, hang on. Um... Yeah, I saw the blood spatter. Tossed the gun out of the peephole. Mm, so I picked it up and made my escape. I mean... What if it's that statement? Um... I could see him through the peephole through the door.
There's two statements about the peephole. So, which statement is the better statement? I saw him through the peephole. Gina threw the gun through the peephole. I think it's this one. She tossed the gun out the people, so I picked it up and then I left. He's saying that the do the people was there at the time that he left. She threw the gun out. <sighs> it's tough, right? Because here's the thing. At this point, we're just trying to figure out video game logic rather than real logic. Because real logic, I could take this statement and I could say... Yo... I, I could show the photo and be like, the people wasn't there. Um... She tossed the gun out the peephole. I don't know, guys. I don't- I, I don't know how you know which statement is the better statement. Um... <sighs> first instinct... I mean, this is the first mention of the people. We want to bring this into it. I... <sighs> It's tough. I'm not gonna lie. Single bullet wound in the man's back. Um, this, this photo is a short time before the murder took place. This shows the scene after the murder had taken place. Also, like, we just got this, and it's the smoking gun. This should be the piece of evidence that saves us. But throwing out a random cat flap at, like, the evidence- you, you can't do it with a single piece. I need all three pieces of evidence to build my case here. I need to connect the flap a mat to the two photos. I need both photos and the cat flap a mat and I'm sure that I'm going to have to present all three. I don't know which one the game wants me to throw at it first. But you can't prove your case with any one single piece of these by itself. I could see him through the peephole in the door. That contradicts this photo. There- alright. The game may not accept this, but in, in George's world, this piece of evidence, this this photograph shows the contradiction. He's saying I can see through a peephole. I am showing a photograph that shows that there is no peephole in the door. Uh, that is about as direct of a contradiction as I think a person can make. So, that's what I'm saying. Game, are you gonna give it to me or am I gonna be fucked? Objection. I'm fucked. 
All right, fine. Fine, I'll do the, fl the flap -a Jesus Christ, goddamn shit. Fuck this game. <sighs> Let me do the flap -a -mat. Objection. There it is. Oh, what on earth is this eccentric contraption, Council? Oh, it's my cat flap -a -mat, my lord! It makes a way for cats to get in out of a room! I can cut through any door you can think of and make a new little door in the middle of it! That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating so-called cat flaps, and if you would have just let me show you the picture that shows no to I- I was building something, but you know what? You guys can all fuck yourselves, alright? I'm gonna show you how stupid you all were. Small doors for cats to come and go as they please without their owners. I'm sure we can all work out that for ourselves! Oh. Why are you a ray of sunshine? That cat lover's contrivance has no possible relevance to this case. Girl, I tried to show the relevance, but you all shut me down because you're like, George, you're too stupid, and I'm like, actually, I'm too smart, so fuck all of you. Oh, really? Of course it doesn't! To start with, there is no cat flap in the pawnbroker door. Hmm. Not being a keeper of cats myself, I'm afraid I fail to see what this has to do with the matter at hand. Perhaps it would help if I could describe its function another way, Your Honor. This contraption is able to create a peephole in any door you can imagine in practically no time at all. Oh, I beg your pardon. A peephole, you say, like a peeping Tom? Two nights ago, we arrived at the scene only minutes after the murder of Mr. Windemake had taken place. That's right! According to the paperwork at the yard, it was you, your Japanese assistant, and Sholmes. Right. The three of us were together, and it's recently come to my attention that my assistant made use of this device at the time. Why would she not have told me that from the get-go? That makes absolutely no sense, unless there's something I'm not getting, or it, it, it's literally just for the convenience of the game's plot, because the game needed a story, we needed a twist. But like, Susato's my judicial assistant. For what reason would she have like, like I, I get her reason for like using the device, but for what reason would she have hidden that from me and not just told me outright, hey, I used this device to look through the door. Cause it's, it like, that made this whole entire trial so needlessly complicated. It, it doesn't make sense. I, I think it's a stupid plot. <laughs> it, 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 maybe there's something I'm not understanding as to why she wouldn't communicate that information to me, but I don't see why she wouldn't. Anyways, let's move on. Your assistant did what? There was a peephole in the storeroom door. I can attest to that. Because I looked through the peephole myself in order to see inside the locked storeroom. This is ludicrous! What are you trying to say? Of course there was a people in the door! I said as much in my testimony! How else could I have witnessed the crime for pity's sake? Yes. How could you? What? Counselor, kindly say what you mean. It's time. It's time to strike the final blow. What I mean is this, my lord. My assistant made the peephole in the storeroom door, and until such time as she did, the door had no hole in it to look through. No! <laughs> wow, all these men in their coats. What you gotta say? This is a farce! Are you really suggesting that the peephole in the door was... Yeah, it was created only after the incident had already taken place by my judicial assistant using this device. Your assistant tampered with the crime scene whilst being fully aware of the gravity of her actions. Well, that's a most serious act of vandalism. And I do humbly apologize for that, my lord. It was in the few minutes that I left to the scene in order to pursue the Skulkin brothers and alert the police. Nevertheless, in the light of this new information, it becomes apparent that Mr. Graydon's testimony 
is riddled with holes. Okay. Maybe I can backpedal a little bit. So, is the game trying to say that rather than her out of- My brain was thinking she did it out of curiosity, like, Oh no, what's behind the door? Let me go take a peek. Are they trying to say that, like, Susato-san's logic was, Oh, clearly some crime is- Like, is she playing 4D chess where she's like, Oh, I do know that this person's gonna make up this story and make up this lie down the road, so let me put a hole in this door to make a hole in their testimony in the future. And then, let me also skirt my ass out of the country because, like, you know, I tampered with the crime scene and whatnot. Which, props, like, good call. But, like... It just... Is it stupid of me to say I'm not buying into the realism of this... Ace Attorney game. I, 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 I questioned a parrot once before. Like, I've done it all. Realism be damned. Also, my former assistant was a literal spirit medium who inhabited uh, several spirits and, and grew tits the size of mountains. So, you know, she was also a teenager. And then the one after that was a nine-year-old. So, you know. Maybe it's best to not question realism. <laughs> Riddled with? Do explain yourself, Counsel. The majority of Ashley's testimony appears to, that appears to incriminate the defendant is based upon what he, he witnessed through the peephole in the storeroom door. Yes! That filthy girl shooting the man in the back! However, if at the time of the incident, that peephole didn't exist in the door yet. There's no possible way that you could have seen what you claim to have seen. <clears throat> in short, your entire testimony is a pack of lies. Yeah. Order! Is there any credence to this revelation? None whatsoever, as my learned friend must surely realize. Exactly! This is just some cheap trick designed to discredit me! I'm afraid it's no trick, sir. Of course it is! Do you seriously expect people to believe that that plaything can cut through a solid wooden door? Oh, it definitely can! I designed it to be very powerful! It can cut through even the toughest of doors! That's absurd! I don't believe it for a second! Mm, Alright, let's get a demonstration. I had a feeling you would say that. What? Waggy! It's time for dinner! Oh, she... She already had it, has it made. What? Hi. Well? Ugh. Young lady, this is the old Bailey! One does not make cat flaps in the oak paneling of the old Bailey! I'm not done yet, don't worry. This doesn't mean that the people in the storeroom door at Windebanks was made by your machine. And there's no way you can prove that it was. No. I think it's rather easy. What? You see, the cat flaps on my cat flap a mat creates all of a- are, are, they're all a fixed size. And the dimensions of the people at Windebanks is the exact same size. Ugh! Mm, seems good enough to me. Old Silky's lost for words! That's a good work, Iris. I am proud to have another child assistance at my disposal. And now it's my learned student's friend's turn to be lost for words, I feel. What do you mean? I believe your judicial assistant has already left the country for your Eastern Island's home. Well, yeah, that's true. She has. Then you may have some difficulty in establishing all the facts. For the sake of argument, let us assume that the people uh, has the dimensions that are perfectly fit for this contraption. In that case, when was the peephole cut? The prosecution demands proof of your answer. Girl, I tried to show it to the court and you all shut me down. I'm getting real fucking zesty over this bitch. I have the proof you're looking for. What is the purpose of your line of inquiry, Lord Von Siegs? It's very simple, my lord. The defense argues that the people was created after the incident using this device. But now that the perpetrator has returned to her native land, she cannot testify to that fact. There is no proof. Ugh. 
And for as long as the defense remains unable to prove when the peephole was made, my learned friend's claim amounts to nothing more than a baseless accusation. Baseless? I'm gonna show you how based I am. Indeed, that is so, Lord Von Seeks. Well, Counsel, I, uh... Don't give up now, Runo! This is the time to create your own opening and force your way through! God damn. Listen, honey. There is a time and a place for that, and you gotta make sure you find the right bottom who's ready to take on that task. They all say they're ready for it. I would say about one-third actually are. <laughs> okay. Susato-san is the greatest judicial assistant in the world. She's not gonna let me down, and I'm not gonna let her down. Very well, the counsel for the defense will present evidence to support the claim made. Proof that the people in the door of Windebank's storeroom was created after the event and not before. I will. However, I might do it tomorrow. This is weird, okay? I get it, we are in the climax. And to be honest, and chat, I, I think I saw somebody allude to it vaguely that we're getting close to the end. This feels like we're maybe potentially wrapping up. However, we're at, we're coming up, we're over an hour. I have a hunch. I'm purely guessing that even once we solve the case, I am guessing that there's going to be a lot of like closure. I feel like this game's going to close out its story relatively slowly. I, I, I'm getting, I'm gonna take a wild shot in the dark and guess that there's gonna be a reasonably lengthy epilogue to closing out this whole story and wrapping up everybody's timelines. So, I'm thinking it might make more sense to split this and 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 maybe possibly finish in a in a maybe slightly long stream tomorrow rather than accidentally like trying to just keep going and keep going and keep going and accidentally find myself streaming for like 3 hours tonight. <laughs> Cuz I'm lazy and I want to eat dinner. So I think that makes the most sense. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, and, uh, and, and, and hopefully I am making the right choice. I'm kind of flying blind here, but this ha has a good feeling in my gut. So uh, that's what I'm going to do, actually. If you guys could please leave a like on the stream and then join me tomorrow for, oh my God, you guys, I think tomorrow might be the finale of the Great Ace Attorney. How cool. And then we'll be done with this game. And guys, finale streams are always a fun time. Maybe I'll do shots or something. I don't know. And then, um, and, and then we get to start a new game, and that'll be dope. So, so that's that's my plan. Um, I, I I hope to see it through. If you guys could please leave a like on the stream, the engagement is super helpful. I will see you guys tomorrow. And until then, boys, toodles.